Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem 4 from IMC 2023. Let P be a prime and let K be a positive integer. Suppose that the numbers AI equals I to the power of K plus I form a complete residue system mod P. What is the set of possible remainders of A2 upon division by P? The first thing that I did was I tried this one for uh, small values of P. It was difficult to deal with that because of the condition, the weird condition that they have given me. Uh, so I won't write that down, but I did um, try that for P equals 2, P equals 3, and P equals 5. Um, and you can try that and see what you get. So, what I got was for 3, I ended up getting A2 is 1, and for 5, I ended up getting A2 is 4, which there wasn't like a clear pattern, at least for these two numbers. And for P equals 2, there is no possible AI, because if you uh, evaluate A0, you get 0, and if you evaluate A1, you get 2, which is also 0 when P is 2. So, we can assume that P is odd. Okay, at that point, um, I thought, okay, so this is basically AI is a permutation of 0 through P minus 1. So what I did was I took the sum of AI, and as usual, my strategy is to walk you through the process by which I obtain the solution rather than just giving you the solution. So the sum of AI must be the same as the sum of I because AIs are just a permutation. And I can ignore the first term of 0. Of course, this gives you that sum of i to the power of k plus i is the same, of sum, uh, same as sum of i. Cancelling sum of i, we get the sum of i to the power of k is equal to 0. Now, this is a sum that I actually know how to evaluate. I will briefly go over the solution to this one, what to do to, into, in order to evaluate this one. Uh, but I will also post a video on evaluation of that uh, specifically. That's a pretty well-known uh, sum in uh, zp, integers mod p. So let g be a primitive root, by which it means, if you aren't familiar with primitive roots, uh, what that means is that if you look at g to the power of 0, g to the power of 1, all the way to g to the power of p minus 2, this is a, and includes 0, this is a complete residue system mod p. So in other words, in other words, every number from 1 to p minus 1 is a power of g. So what that means is that sum of i to the power of k is the same as sum of g to the power of nk. And uh, i here goes from 1 to p minus 1. And here n goes from 0 to p minus 2. So if you evaluate that, this is a geometric sum, so you will get the first term, which is 1, minus the term after the last term, which would be p minus 1k, divided by 1 minus common ratio, and common ratio is g to the power of k. This is true if g to the power of k is not 1. In that case, you would get 0, because g to the power of p minus 1 is 1. If g to the power of k is 1 in my integers mod p, then all of these are just 1. So you have p minus 1 term, so that would be negative 1. So bottom line is sum of i to the power of k is equal to negative 1 if p minus 1 divides k, because that's the case when g to the power of k is 1, and 0 if p minus 1 does not divide k. And in fact, this can be done in any field. If you take a field, a finite field, you can do the same process. Again, I will post a video about that, and I will put the link in the description. Okay, so this gave me something. It gave me that in this case, p minus 1 must not divide k. The next thing was looking at i to the power of k plus i. One obvious thing is that this can never be 0, mod p. So, and I'm working uh, mod p, so I'm going to actually just t take everything and write down equalities, given that every equality that I'm writing down in, in is in mod p. So this means i to the power of k minus 1 plus 1 isn't 0. One thing that it tells you is that k minus 1 is even. So k is odd. Because if you plug in i equals negative 1, negative 1 to the power of k minus 1 plus 1 cannot be 0, so k minus 1 must be even. k must be odd. Other than that, I couldn't really get anything interesting from that. 
So then I thought, okay, so I did sum of i to the power of k, i equals 1 to p minus 1. Why not just do the product of i to the power of k plus i? So I know that the product of i to the power of k plus i, i equals 1 to p minus 1, must also be the same product of i, i equals 1 to p minus 1. Because of the fact that this is also a complete residue system, if you exclude zero. So dividing by a product of i, we would get the product of i to the power of k minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 1, i equals 1 to p minus 1. Okay, now I'm trying to find things like this in a field. And I hadn't explicitly seen this kind of problem, but uh, this looks like a polynomial that you replace the x by 1. So if you look at the product of x plus i to the power of k minus 1, and then you replace x by 1, you get exactly that, uh, that expression. Now if you look at the uh, terms i to the power of k minus 1, we can write down every i as a power of g. So again, let g be a primitive root. mod p. So we can write down the product of i to the power of k minus 1 plus 1, i goes from 1 to p minus 1, as the product of g to the power of l k minus 1 plus 1, and l goes from 0 to p minus 2. Now, if you look at these uh, terms g to the power of k minus 1, it has some order. So suppose order of g to the power of k minus 1 is n. There's a pretty simple uh, formula for this n. This is exactly equal to order of g, and this is a pretty simple exercise in abstract algebra or number theory. It's not very easy, it's not very difficult to see. It's order of g divided by gcd of k minus 1 and order of g. Now order of g is p minus 1 so this is GCD of k minus 1 and p minus 1 at the bottom. So this is the order. Now, when I look at the powers of this g, g to the power of k minus 1, they will repeat after a point. So we will have g to the power of k minus 1, g to the power of 2 times k minus 1, all the way to g to the power of n minus 1, k minus 1, and then they repeat. So in other words, if I look at the product of g to the power of L k minus one, or yeah, plus one. L equals so I started from zero to p minus two. There are p minus one terms. This would be the product of g to the power of L k minus one plus one. L goes from zero to n minus one, and then we raise that to the power of p minus one over n. So if I evaluate this guy, then I would be able to evaluate the product. Now, looking at these terms, again, if I call this g to the power of k minus 1 as maybe h, then I know that order of h is n, which means if I look at h to the power of 0, h to the power of 1, all the way to h to the power of n minus 1, these are distinct solutions. 2x to the n minus 1 equals 0. So I have n distinct solutions to an equation, which means because I'm working in a field, x to the power of n minus 1 is the product of x minus h to the power of j, j equals 0 to n minus 1. So now I'm going to substitute x by negative 1. I will get negative 1 to the power of n minus 1 is equal to the product of negative 1 minus h to the power of j, j equals 0 to n minus 1. And I'm going to factor the negative 1's from the right. So I get negative 1 to the power of n minus 1 minus 1 equals negative 1 to the power of n, the product of 1 plus h to the power of j, j equals 0 to n minus 1. So there are two possibilities. If n, and by the way this would have to be n, if n is even then that product is 0, 1 plus h to the power of j is 0, j equals 0 to n minus 1. And if n is odd, then 
that product becomes since n is odd negative 1 to the power of n both of them are negative 1 so the product of 1 plus h to the power of j is going to be 2 j equals 0 2 and minus 1 so the first case is not going to happen because the product will have to be 1 so if you remember this would have to be 1 so what we know is the product of g to the power of l k minus 1 plus 1 l ranges from 0 to n minus 1 to the power of p minus 1 over n is 1 which means I know this guy is 2 so 2 to the power of p minus 1 over n is 1 if you recall n was p minus 1 over gcd of p minus 1 and k minus 1 that tells us p minus 1 over n is equal to gcd of p minus 1 and k minus 1 so taking that we get 2 to the power of gcd of p minus 1 and k minus 1 is 1 but gcd of p minus 1 k minus 1 is a factor of k minus 1 so that means 2 to the power of k minus 1 is 1 so that tells us 2 to the power of k is 2 and this is coincidentally exactly going to give us a2 a2 is 2 to the power of k plus 2 2 to the power of k is 2 so this would become 4 and that means the remainder is 4 if p is greater than 3 and 1 if p is equal to 3 and that brings me to the end of this video if you like this video make sure you to, to check out the rest of the videos on my channel i have a lot of videos like this walking you through the process by which i obtain a solution and i will see you in the next video